Regenerative agriculture is basically doing proper residue management where you're trying to uh, recycle the carbon energy and the other nutrients in your residue back for the next or falling crops and uh, you try to uh, do it just like nature does it. Nature doesn't bury its residue from its plants but man basically since we've been uh, doing agriculture has been doing tillage which often buries the residue and doesn't recycle it and over time your soils degrade in especially natural structure which continues making the process even worse and your soils need to breathe just like your lungs they need to take in fresh oxygen for the life in the soil including the plants and they have to expel spent gases that are done during biologic processes when soils no longer have that natural structure, the micro and macro pores in the soil, man has to do tillage to physically create those macro pores and stuff or else there is no, the soil will just become compacted and nothing will grow of any substance. For about three and a half years now, presentations and training sessions for ones like the NRCS, uh, their, their area people about soil health. We've done uh, soil and water conservation county meetings to help train farmers, uh, different area watersheds. We've uh, done soil health to help uh, connect the soil to the water quality of, of the soil. 4-H groups, I mean almost everybody. And we've even had bus tours come to our place um, the Women's Food and Agricultural Network uh, came to our place to learn about soil health. And last year we were asked by the McKnight Foundation Philanthropy to put on a presentation for their board of directors. Uh, we didn't make it down to last year's Strip Till conference uh, because about a month and a half or so before they come, they said that the uh, daughter of the McKnight's was also going to come along with the board and with some of her family members and they had invited uh, the Waltons and we didn't catch on right away but the Waltons were about three generations of Sam Walton's children and grandchildren and stuff. So we kind of thought we maybe should stay home and see if we got the lawn and stuff looking presentable. Uh, one of the things that we do when we often do presentations like that where there uh, isn't a PowerPoint presentation but a, you know just a hands-on presentation is we made this terrarium where we put soils from our farm in to try and demonstrate how healthy they are and actually while we've had them in this terrarium uh, kept mostly in our cool garage which is kind of the best temperature for earthworms as we had also put a bunch of earthworms in there and we would uh, provide food for them in the form of some dried hairy vetch. Uh, the bottom of the terrarium had about four inches of clay in it above the A or below the A horizon. Uh, about eight months, well no I guess it would be about ten months after we had done that, that's when the Waltons and the Minites had come. And uh, we have pictures showing that by that time the four inches of clay in the bottom had all been converted into a horizon. The clay was already had enough organic matter uh, placed down there by the worms that we had grown that soil an extra four inches deep into our soil. And we call this growing your soils as you know we grow our soils down and that a horizon is your root zone so the more and deeper you grow that a horizon the greater area you have for your roots of your plants to feed on and provide nutrients that you don't have to buy in the form of fertilizer. We find that in our farm where we practice regenerative agriculture that when we compare it to other examples of what people pay for fertilizer and stuff we buy about half as much. So that significantly cuts our costs, 
Also practicing no-till and strip-till, we'll use about three gallons to bring a crop into the yard for no-till and about four gallons of diesel fuel to bring a crop into the yard on doing strip-till. And we're talking uh, 50, 60 bushel soybeans per acre and 200 plus corn. So uh, we're, uh, we think that's pretty good. In fact, this year we have some management zones we believe will go 300 bushel and while that much corn requires 400 pounds of nitrogen to produce, we only used 150 pounds of actual and purchase. So we think regenerative agriculture, anyone who's willing to try it can significantly cut their costs and be much more sustainable.